So today we'll be going over a trade idea scanner tutorial and how to customize the settings to fit your own trading strategies. And I'll be sharing with you step by step how I set up all my scanners. That includes the pre-market gappers for the small caps and large caps, momentum scanner, low float scanner, and the volatility hold scanner. And I'll leave a link for you to download my settings and a coupon code to get 15% off trade ideas. We'll also be going over the difference between Benzin Pro and trade ideas and what kind of trading strategies and styles that they are best suited for. This was a highly requested topic from you guys. So if you enjoy video tutorials like these, make sure to always destroy the like button to make it rain Lamborghinis tomorrow. So you can see on my trade ideas layout, I have the large cap ga gappers, the small cap gappers, these two other gapper scanners I use for pre-market. I also have a gap down scanner. The gap down scanner works for both the large caps and the small caps because I kind of just group them together as I don't trade gap downs that often unless there's a specific setup. What I have here also are the low float scanners, low float momentum scanners and just the momentum scanners that pick up the volume and the high of day breakouts. That's for both the small caps and the large caps. And down here I have a volatility hold scanner. So when a stock is halted and resumes, I'll get to see it up here and gets picked up and alerted by trade ideas. Here on the left, I have the single stock window and the individual chart window. So you can see if I click through different stocks, this updates to the stock that I just clicked from my scanners. So you can see I get to see the float, um, the market cap, the short float percentage on the individual stock key stats, and also the daily chart, which is really important if I want to take a look at the stock really quick and how it's setting up on the daily. So let's talk about the pre-market gappers first. So how you get these uh, pre-market gappers is go in, click new and click top list window and drop down for gaps over here and click up gappers and that will give you the default gap up scanner. So um, right now it's on the weekend, so you don't see anything here, but uh, like I have with all the scanner windows that you can see here, you can configure and go back to historical data for each of the scanners you have. So it's really useful for you to back test strategies. So if I go in, right click and click time frame, you know, it, during market time, of course, you use live always. But for us right now, let's test the settings. So we want to use historical date. So if you click this, you can go back to, let's say, you know, back on Friday, I want to see the stats for all the scanners pre-market. So that'll be like 5.40 a.m. for me. So this is using local time. So this is a default scanner they have for you. So if you don't do anything, if you don't change any of the settings, this is what you get on that day, the default gap scanner. But you know, to get the small cap and large cap gappers I have here, I went in and customized some settings. So this is a default. Uh, let me show you the customization I did to mine. So if I go to configure, you can see a lot of the different columns I have added on there. You need to go to search, the search tab up here and search up. Let's say like you can see they don't have float by default. You just search float and oh, I can type float and you just add the filter. So you add this filter and once you add it, that filter will be in columns and you see the float right here and you click this arrow to add it to one of your columns on the scanner. So you can see I already have all these added already. I have the symbols, price, price of the stock, change from close, the price and the percentage, volume, relative volume, gap percentage, float. I, it's really important for me to see the short float percentage. So I want to know if the stock can potentially short squeeze, right? Other important things for me is the percentage held by institutional ownership and also the market cap. So once you have all the different columns on your scanner added here, this is where you go to window specific filters to you know narrow down all the kind of stocks you actually want to potentially play. So this is where you can narrow down the price range of the stock that you want to play. So I have usually set for, from one to $10. Sometimes you can change it to 15 or $20 if you want. Change from close percentage, I just put 1% because pre-market, you know, a lot of stocks haven't ran yet. So I usually leave it at 1% or even just zero. And volume today pre-market, I want to see it has already traded at least 2,500 shares. 
right? You can, this is really loose, that like you can go in and adjust that depending on the market conditions because there are times where a lot of low floats will gap up on thin volume and they will, the volume will come in a lot later. So as for the average daily volume, it's the same as volume today. I want to leave it pretty, you know, pretty wide open so I get a glimpse of all the gappers. I don't want to be too specific pre-market because a lot of times, you know, you'll lose a lot of place because of that. So, you know, you can play around with this. I think I usually put 50,000 or 100,000 and that's all the specific filters I have with this. Like it's pretty simple. So that's the settings for the small cap gap. As for the large caps, it's pretty much the same thing except um, for the price range. So you can see all the columns are pretty much the same. I have all the information I want, you know, short float, market cap, I, institutional ownership and the sector. And the window specific filters, this is where I put $10 to $100. So that's my price range for the large cap gappers. Change from close, same thing. Uh, volume today, $2,500. Average daily volume, 5,000. And as for the gap percentage, this is where on the large cap gappers, I'll put 2% because otherwise it's not really worth playing for me because these are usually, you know, you can see here higher price stocks. Uh, I want to see stocks with a more significant gap already pre-market to set up for a play at the market open or the first two hours. So that's my settings. I don't think you need this here but you can have that here if you want. You don't really need this here. So that's my settings for the large cap gappers. As you know already, I played both the penny stocks, the small caps, and the large caps. Recently, the small caps have been very hot, so I really only focus on the pre-market small cap gappers. And the large caps are just for the seasons that the small caps are kind of dead, usually during the summer. So this is the default, I'm gonna close that now. So to get to the default gap down scanner that they have in Trade Ideas, go to new top list window and uh, click down gappers and load settings and click OK. And you have the down gappers here, but you need to go back and change the historical time. Let's use Friday, let's say uh, 5.50 a.m. So by default, this is what the gap down scanner looks like in Trade Ideas. So let me show you my settings now, which is you know, pretty simple, it's nothing fancy. So my settings, again, you get more columns on the top. I want to see the float, um, the float percentage, uh, the market cap, the institutional ownership. Also very similar to my um, gap up scanners. So if I go to configure again, window specific settings for the gap downs, I trade stocks usually between, you know, five to a hundred. So for this one, for the gap downs, I am not, you know, narrow it down to penny stocks or the large caps because I don't usually trade penny stock gap, gap downs. So, you know, I have the, the price set to five to a hundred. I want to see at least 2% gap down from close. And volume today pre-market again, so you know 2,500 pre-market average daily volume. You can again play around with this 50,000 or 5,000 doesn't really matter. And that's the settings. Like you can see, very simple, nothing fancy here. So that's the settings I have for the gap down scanner. I really like playing large cap and mid cap gap downs because a lot of times they give you some really fast um, bounce moves right at the open for like two three points. So that's something I play a lot. It's you may have seen from many of my recap videos. Okay, so those are my pre-market gappers. So let me close the defaults here. And usually how I have it laid out pre-market is like this. I have my large caps, small caps in the middle, and the down gappers on the left here. And this is kind of how I lay them out. I have the chart for daily and also the individual stock profile window. And how you get these is with, if you go to new and you can click chart window, and that's where you get the daily chart and also go to single stock window and that's where you get you know the individual stock profiles so after about 10 minutes at the open that's where i hide my pre-market gapper scanners and then pull up the momentum scanners so let's talk about the low float momentum scanner first so how you get these alert window by default is go to new and click alert window so this is where you get to pick, you know, the kind of alert um, by default that you want. So let's go to bullish strategies. So let's say new daily highs. That's a very common one that everyone uses. 
click that load settings and click OK. So this is the default new high of the date alert window they have in Trade Ideas. And of course, you can go in and customize the different kind of alerts and the specific stock filters you want, which is what I'm going to show you right now. So let me minimize that. So in the alert window I have for the low float momentum, go click configure again. And you can see the columns I have, it's very similar to the pre-market gapper scanner that have the same columns, all the th same things that I care about, such as price, change from close, volume today, relative volume, the float, and the float percentage, institutional I.O., market cap, volume, and how many alerts it's had today. So pretty simple over here in terms of the columns. But for the window specific filters, where I this is where I want to see the low float from one to fifty dollars and change from close i want to see one percent change volume today i need to see at least it has traded at least a hundred thousand an average daily i need three hundred thousand and the float okay float usually if you're trading small cap stocks you want float under five million shares but recently we've had a lot of biotech stocks that's around you know, 1 billion market cap and their float is 25 million. So that's considered a low float for a market cap like that. So that's why I have it set to 25 million shares uh, for the maximum for the float number. So you can play around with a float number, but that's just my settings for the low float um, scanner. So you can see like we picked up, you know, IFLX, you know, on Friday and also TCCO. I think I have this set to, you know, historical time at yeah, Friday, last trading day. And so you can see um, on the last trading day, um, the scanner picked up, you know, CEI, TCCO, and LMPX, which a lot of people were playing. So you, again, you can go in and customize all the different settings as you wish. And before I forget, you go back to the select alert setting. So for the low float momentum scanner, I only have new highs and the pre-market high breakout alert set. Um, for the other momentum scanner, I have strong volume and 60 minute high, but no, like for the low float, I keep it very simple, just new high and pre-market highs. But again, you can go in and customize that if you want. Now let's talk about the momentum scanner. I have it set for you know, the large cap and the small caps, and this one, what I care about is range and volume. So let's go to the configure again. For the alerts here, I have, you can see I have new high, um, cross daily high resistance. So when a stock is breaking above um, previous day high. Um, strong volume, I have the ratio set at 1.5. Ratio, so if that's what I call a volume breakout, and that's what's gonna push the stock higher, generally speaking. So that's why I have the filter here. I also have 60 minute high. So, you know, I want to see stock have consolidated for around an hour and breaking out to new highs. Because generally speaking, like after a long period of time of consolidation, the breakout will be a lot stronger and more successful. So that's why I have, you know, the 60 minute high alert set here. You can set other stuff like, you know, post market highs, pre market highs, and you can even search other alerts here for your momentum strategy. You have to be very specific with your filters. You don't want to just add everything because then you will be overwhelmed. Like, look at this, like channel breakout, 30 minute consolidation breakout, block trade, triangle, rectangle pattern, uh, Lamborghini pattern, where is that? I'm looking for that. 30 minute high, 60 minute high, trailing stop, Fibonacci, SMA crossing, MACD crossing, beneath it's zero, like holy sh**. This is way too much, like way too fancy for me and way too, you know, complicated for me. Now let's go to window specific filters for the momentum scanner I have. So I have price between one to $20. Sometimes I'll change it to 50 or 100. Um, but usually I prefer stocks between one to 20. Change from close, I wanna see 2% at least. Volume today, 300,000. And relative volume, because you know I trade the volume breakout, I want to see 1.5 relative volume. And I left the rest of it blank, uh, just like that. And again, the columns are very similar to what I have for all the other scanner settings. So next we're gonna talk about the volatility hold scanner. So the hold scanner here, you can see these are the stocks that were halted and resumed um, on Friday, the last trading day. So if I go to configure, select alert, I only have the hold and the resume alert in this window, right? Remember all the early ones, we have all these fancy shit. like, no, just 
hold and resume. And when you go to window specific filters, I want the price to be at least a dollar. Um, maximum, I don't really mind playing higher price stocks. So you can set it to 20 or 50 if that's what you want. And volume today, I want it to have at least traded 100,000. Average daily volume, I want at least 50,000 and you don't need anything down here. So I keep it very simple. And if you click OK, that's the settings. And you can see on, the, on Friday, we picked up LNPX. I didn't trade it on Friday, but I did trade TNDM and AMRN was after hours, I believe, but I didn't trade that one. So that's a volatility hold scanner. And you can customize these alert scanners to fit your various strategies. Like you can go to go back to new and go to alert window. And this is where you would say you can pick, you know, your bullish strategies. You can start with using their default ones they provide for you. So that's a, like, you can see like there's tons of different ones for you to start with. So again, if you trade mostly based on candlestick patterns, you can go in, use these alerts to start and go in and configure and customize into narrowing down even more. So trade ideas do give you a lot of preset to start with. And if you go to the, the channel bar, which by default you should have when you first, you know, signed up for trade ideas, they give you this channel bars and like to start with different layout for different strategies. So let's say you trade a lot of the earnings. You can click that and that will give you the default layout and all the default settings for trading earnings and other defaults like pre-market movers, you know, the ready to run stocks and the social media rippers. So I guess the default is picking up all the stocks that people are talking about on Twitter and stock tweets and other ideas like swing ideas, stock, stocks are surging, trading the gap and the sector ETFs. That's why the scanner is called trade ideas because they literally provide you a general framework to fit your different strategies. And once you select the preset, it's up for you to go in and be more specific and narrow down the exact stocks that you want to trade and you know, tweak with the settings as you wish. And for me, I don't use any of those AI strategies, so I don't use it. That's the premium plan. I just use a standard and that's plenty enough for me. And another one of their key feature is the brokerage plus right here. I don't use it, but I think you can connect some brokers to trade ideas so you can like have the scanners connected to your buy and sell. I don't use it, but you can have that option if you want. But the feature I enjoy the most is of course going back and back test your strategies using historical data. As you can see, you can select, you know, historical timeframes and see all the stocks that's popping up and test those and see whether those momentum fit your strategies. So one of the questions I get a lot is whether you should use trade ideas with Benzinga Pro. In my opinion, if you are mostly a technical trader, meaning you use a lot of the technical indicators, a lot of patterns like high of the day breakout, bottom consolidation, a lot of the candlestick pattern trader, then trade ideas is probably more suitable for you. But the thing trade ideas is lacking is of course the fundamental research part, which is something I use a lot on a daily basis. I use it when I'm trading large cap earnings and tracking small cap penny stock reverse split and their catalysts. And those are the features I use Benzinga Pro for. You know, I do a lot of research. Um, I do trade based on technical patterns, but I almost always need to know the fundamental catalyst behind it. And that's my trading style. I like to combine both the technicals and the fundamentals. And when they align together, that's where I get the best trades. And that's why I use both trade ideas and Benzinga. And it's up for you to decide for yourself what kind of trading strategies and trading style that you have. I have done another similar walkthrough tutorial for Benzinga if you want to check that out. I'll leave a link for you to download my trade idea setting below. If you're interested in trying out trade ideas, I'll leave a link and the coupon code for you to get 15% off. Don't forget to drop me a like on the video if you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know below. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys next time.